Hi guys, and welcome to another episode with Drone Mesh. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new frame, and it's uh, it's it's called 3BB. It's from a company called 3BB, and this is the R two one one F, I believe. Yeah. So it comes in two version. I think a stretch X and a true X. And this is the true X. I love true X. I love sticking to true X whenever I can. So this one has caught my eye for the longest time. It just looks absolutely insane with the aluminum standoffs and everything. And I really wanted to get my hands on it and see how well it is because it's kind of pricey, but you know, I can see where that price is coming from. So let's quickly talk about some of the specs. It could take up to a 5.1 inch prop. So you could use those gem fan 51, uh, I think uh, 45, I forgot what they are. The 51 gem fan 51 blades on this, you'll be totally fine. This was made in mind to use those. Uh, you could also, the arms, yes, the arms are very important. The arms are five millimeters thick. However, in width, they're a little bit small. So, you know, you, I think you're going to go for uh, around 10 millimeters in, uh, in, in width here. 11 millimeters, we could say, in width. So overall, the, the arms are pretty skinny. Not super skinny, but, you know, if, if you put an ESC here, it's going to be sticking out like this to so take down into consideration. Uh, it takes a normal 30 by 30 flight controller and also takes 20 by 20, as you can tell right there. The arms are just, the whole frame is insanely rigid. I can't even make it budge. This is just, I've never, yeah. This is one of the toughest frames I've ever tried to bend in my life. Uh, I've never had to put so much force into a frame to actually try to get it to bend. So this thing just looks like it could take a beating. However, with everything super awesome, there's always a little downside. I love this frame so much right now that I was going to go ahead and build it with a Tico 32 4 one ESC and the Kakute V2. However, um, they wouldn't fit. So, yeah. And I still needed room for a VTX and I still needed room for a receiver. So it was very bad in that perspective. However, I think this is mo mainly geared towards uh, 20 by 20 flight controllers. So you can get the most out of it because it's pretty light. It's 74 grams, believe it or not. It's pretty insane. Um, also, another thing to take note of, the hardware they provide you with here is just very very good i was able to tighten the living crap out of everything and i didn't even have just a little slip of a strip at all it was just it was insane so everything they're using here is is top quality i could tell you that right now and you are getting what you paid for the cuts are absolutely clean. I mean, you know, no delaminations. Everything is just super clean. I wish they left it with like glossy finish, but um, it's okay. We could always do that ourselves. Maybe we can make a video on that, how to laminate and uh, make them glossy. So I'm thinking of doing that actually. We might do that. Let me know if you guys are interested in that down below. So this comes with everything. They even provide you with the rubber thing for your VTX here so it won't touch the frame and cause video noise because sometimes that does. Um, what they have in here, how this whole thing is held together, it's each arm is held with three screws. Now, one screw goes off to a self-locking nut. Another screw goes off into that nut that just digs into the frame, which is pretty awesome. And the hole isn't big, it's small, so you could really, really tighten that thing down, like insanely tight. And they give you standoffs, and they even give you black rubber gaskets to put that through. So that's awesome in that perspective. The aluminum standoffs, very nice finish. As you can tell, it's just a beautiful purple finish right there. Hopefully the camera will focus here. It's just, it's just, it's very gorgeous, really. I like these hybrid aluminum carbon frames. And the camera plates in here, it's crazy. They slide through there and then they just sit flush with the, um, with the aluminum here. The aluminum, once you screw in the aluminum, this actually holds the camera plate. So when you remove the top, they just stay in place. So that makes it a lot easier in the field. You know how annoying it is when you just pop it up and then, you know, you're going to have to realign the bottom and the top to get the camera to fit. You don't have to do that and that. Just align the top, pop, and it just goes right in. Absolutely beautiful. And, uh, but you are limited in space, like like limited in space so let's just see i, I haven't tested if a matek would fit in there so it's around you get 25 millimeters so it's pretty good height but you know the problem is with the um extensions here you know from when you go all the way up to here now another thing they also provide i just remembered the camera as you can tell the camera needs to go quite a long way they even give you the correct screws to actually make it all the way through to your camera which is very good very very good because that is that would have been one of the most annoying thing on this frame so it is well thought out bottom mount battery frame so it does have the slits and everything for it so it's pretty cool and the 20 by 20 holes you could access them through right there uh through these it goes through here and then you could actually get into them right there so yeah it's bad right there so yeah it's pretty cool so they left you know it's, it's a well thought out frame for gopro i don't know how the heck you would probably mount it um 
I'd probably get creative. I, w I would have to see how my camera would fit in here first. Uh, maybe some kind of... No, that, that'll be terrible right there. So obviously one zip tie here for my type of uh, GoPro mount. But um, yeah. So... Yeah, I don't know how I'd mount my GoPro just yet. But anyways, we'll figure that out later on. And they also provide you... I don't know if I mentioned it. They give you the rubber gaskets and they give you the VTX also rubber gasket here. So it's pretty nice. And they are 5mm arms. So yeah, my batteries are charging because I'm about to take out the DYS Shark right now for testing. Um, and... Overall, it's a nice little strong frame. It looks like it can take beating. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, looking at it, you think it might not, but holy crap, this thing is just insane rigidity. So I really want to build it, but I have no idea what to build it with. So just please let me know down in the comment section, uh, what do you guys think I should build it with? Because I'm just lost, and I really want to build this one as soon as possible, because it's just so awesome, really. I can't even explain it. Hopefully the camera is doing it justice here. I really love this one. I can't, I don't know what, I'm, I, maybe some, I have no idea. I want to put some new fat T motors on there and take this guy. And this guy's just going to be a little fast, nimble monster, just screaming through the air. Anyways, well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. It weighed 74 grams, if I didn't mention that. And um, yeah, I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.